reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 through 13. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Oh, to have been one of those There in that upper room To share a final meal with him Before he died To rise again Supper Supper with Jesus Oh, to have supper with my friend. To hear his words and feel his love. To finally be close enough to have supper, supper with him. On the other side Amidst the mansion's fair I know that I will feast with him When I have died To rise again Supper with Jesus Oh, to have supper with my friend To hear his words and feel his love To finally be close enough To have supper, supper with him I'll break the bread and take the cup I'll finally be close enough To eat and drink of His great love Supper, supper with Jesus Oh, to have supper with my friend To finally be close enough to have supper, supper with him. Oh, to have supper with him. eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. It is the last meal that I'll eat until we all eat together in the kingdom of God. Tonight, 
I have something very hard but important to tell all of you. One of you is going to betray me and hand me over to the conspirators. None of us. Could not be us. special, just a simple fisherman, but I've tried to do what I can to serve Jesus. The other disciples call me Andrew the Bringer. It seems my talent is to bring others to Jesus. I brought my brother Simon Peter to Jesus and have seen his life be transformed for the better. I brought the boy with the five loaves and the two fish to Jesus, and Jesus took those and fed a crowd of 5,000. What a miracle that was. I am so honored to be a friend and follower. Of our Lord Jesus. I hope to always serve him and continue to other, bring others to him so they can see he truly is the Lamb of God. Tonight we have heard that one of us is going to betray our friend. I find that hard to believe. Why would any of us betray him? Could I betray my best friend? Is it I, Lord? My name's Peter. My brother Andrew and I was fishing in the Sea of Galilee when Jesus walked by and said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. You know, we didn't ask any questions, we just dropped our nets and followed him. My name was Simon, but he changed it to Peter, which means the rock. And when I confessed him to be in Christ, the son of the living God, he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Strange that he'd pick a hot-headed fisherman with a runaway tongue. The others call me the big fisherman, but I feel so small in his presence and unworthy. 
Yep, I respect, <clears throat> accept my respect for him as unwaveringly. Tonight, when he said one of us among us would betray him, I immediately swore it was not I. I could never do such a thing. I would follow him even if it led to the death. But he warned me. Before the rooster crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. That's not true. I could never deny him. If I knew who the betrayer was, I'd pierce his heart with my knife. Just to show my love for God. Now how could anyone betray him? Is it even possible? Could it be I, Lord? I'm James, the elder brother of John, and we're the sons of Zebedee. We're just ordinary fishermen in business with our father when Jesus came along one day and called us to follow him. We did that, and we were really honored for Jesus to ask us to be his disciples. Our mother was so proud of us for that, but she was all concerned that we wouldn't get the credit for being followers of Jesus that she thought we should deserve. So she asked him if I could sit on his right and John could sit on his left when he came into his earthly kingdom to rule. Well, Jesus answered that quickly. He said, when I come into my kingdom, the first will be last, the last will be first, and the first will be the servant of all. And he demonstrated his words by getting down on the dirty ground and washing our filthy feet. But now, he's talking some strange talk. He says that one of us that he taught to love and to serve is going to betray him. That's unbelievable. One of us who love him betray him tonight. I know one thing. I couldn't betray Jesus. I don't think I could betray Jesus. Could I? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? I'm Philip. I was following John the baptizer in Bethany when Jesus called me to be his disciple. I told my friend Nathaniel about him, that we had found the one that the prophets had spoken about, and he followed Jesus too. Jesus began teaching us about our Heavenly Father, and it was difficult to understand, but as I followed the Master and watched his miracles and heard his teachings, I've come to realize that he is truly the Son of God, the Chosen One, the Messiah. And now, he says that there's a betrayer in our midst, a traitor. How can this be? Who could it be? Who among us? could betray Jesus? Wouldn't they know that betraying Jesus would be betraying God? Betray, by conspiring against Jesus, he would be conspiring against God. I just can't understand it. it who could it be? Is it I? My real name is Nathaniel, although I'm also known as Bartholomew. I was born in Cana of Galilee, and like most of the others here, I was a fisherman. Philip is a close companion, and it was he who first brought me to Jesus. I'll never forget the question I put to him that day. Can anything good come from Nazareth? It is such a small, insignificant place. But after hearing Jesus, he said, Now here is an Israelite to whom there is nothing false. I said, How do you know me? He said, before Philip called, I saw you under the fig tree. After hearing this, I knew that he was the true Messiah. Since then, I have served him, walking the villages of Galilee, 
watching them turn water into wine, and performing many great miracles. And now while we share the Passover meal, he says that one of us will betray him. Who could it be? Could it be me? Is it I, Lord? My name is Thomas. I grew up near the Sea of Galilee and was a commercial fisherman before Jesus called me to follow him. Many remember me as Doubting Thomas, but I am not a man of doubt. I just want to know the facts. I need to see physical evidence before I make any decision. That's not doubt. That's just wanting to know the truth. And I certainly don't doubt Jesus. Actually, I am one of his most faithful followers. Why, I have seen him heal the sick and cleanse the lepers. I have seen him give sight to the blind and open the ears of the deaf. I don't doubt. I know Jesus is the Messiah. I wonder why people remember me as doubtful and forget that I was a faithful disciple. Tonight, the Lord has said that there is a traitor amongst the chosen twelve. Could this be true? What proof does he have? Does, does he s suspect me? Lord, is it I? I am Matthew, the publican. My business was to gather taxes for the Roman government in Capernaum. I heard marvelous reports of Jesus, and I longed for an opportunity to see him. One day, as I sat counting the coins before me, a stranger came by and drew my attention. His manner of life and personality moved me deeply. His eyes pierced right through me. He looked upon me and spoke to me as though he knew me. Then, softly yet urgently, he said, follow me. His winsome invitation generated so much confidence in me that I arose and followed him. I knew that he was not a mere man. I followed Jesus during his earthly ministry, and then I became a missionary in Palestine. Later I went to the Ethiopians, the Macedonians, the Syrians, the Persians, the Parthians, and the Medes. I wrote my experiences with Jesus, what he did and taught, into the Gospel of Matthew, which bears my name. I gave up a good job to follow Jesus, but my life really started when I met and followed him. Now he has spoken tragic news that one of us will betray him. Who can that be? Will they suspect me because I was once a hated tax collector? Could it be me? Could it, Lord? I am James to the Lesser the son of Alphaeus. Since many men bear the name of James, they gave me the title of James the Lesser. It could be, perhaps, due to my shortness of stature. When Jesus called me to be one of his disciples, I went immediately, leaving behind my home, my job, and my friends. Since that time, I've had the glory and the honor to, to walk with him, to talk with him, and to pray with him. I have no desire for any honor of my own, but only to bring glory and honor to him and to further the kingdom of God. But now he says that one of us is to betray him. It seems madness to think that, that such a thing could be possible. Surely there must be a stranger or someone outside the group that would do something like that. But Jesus seems so sure that it must be. So I have to ask myself, is it I? 
Is it I? I am Judas Iscariot, certainly one of the most powerful and trusted member of the Master's beloved society. As I'm the treasurer, I control the purse strings. I've always been a man of ambitious design, and I was very pleased when Jesus asked me to be one of the twelve disciples. I've often held high hopes that Jesus would establish his earthly kingdom and that I might receive a prominent position with him. But he hasn't acted like a king. He has asked us to give up all of our worldly possessions, to share our food, not to take anything, but to rely on the goodness of strangers. He doesn't care anything about money or power. When Mary anointed the, the feet of Jesus with that precious perfume, I was against it. Yes, what a waste. I could have brought in many pieces of silver. Master has shown signs of, shall we say, weakness. And I believe that he could use a little prodding so as to reach his goals and establish his earthly kingdom. And so if, if I have found a way of manipulating things behind the scenes, what of it? A confrontation with officials will force Jesus to show his power. And after all, what, what can they charge him with? He has done nothing. He, will, he would soon be free. No harm done. And then he could get on with the business of establishing his kingdom and dismantling the Roman government. One day, Jesus will thank me for putting him in this position a position where he can take control and show his power, save himself and his followers. And now he, he speaks of a traitor in our midst? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I am not the betrayer. I am the hero. I am Simon the Zealot, or Simon Zelotos. Before Jesus of Nazareth called me, I was a member of a hot-headed, bloodthirsty group of rebels known as the Zealots. I hated Rome for enslaving my country, and I hated God for turning his back on me. I lived by the sword. And if it were not for Jesus, I would have died by the sword. I once heard him say, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the sons of God. He also said, You should love your enemies, and pray for those that persecute you. Upon hearing this, I gave my allegiance to him, my deepest devotion and my loyalty. I vowed to love as he loves, to think as he thinks, and to serve as he serves. I now know of a kingdom where God reigns. I now know a kingdom where hearts are changed. The kingdom of Rome is mighty, but the kingdom of God is almighty. Tonight the Master tells us that someone is going to betray him this very evening. Is it Matthew, the former tax collector for Rome? Or am I a suspect because of my violent past? Or is it I? My real name is Judas Lobaeus, but to lessen the confusion between I and Judas Iscariot, they call me Thaddeus. I well remember the day Jesus called me to follow him. After a night of prayers, he commissioned us to go forth and preach the kingdom of God is at hand. He told us to be as wise as serpents 
and as innocent as doves, since he was sending us forth as sheep amongst the wolves. Just a few days ago, Jesus made a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where I sure his hour had come where he would send to the throne of David. But then he spoke some troublesome words. I now see him astride his donkey entering Jerusalem, not as a king, but as a lamb amongst these wolves. We've had this Passover feast in such secrecy, and I'm afraid for our safety. And now he says someone here will betray us? Is there a wolf amongst us? Who could it be? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? I remember the first time Jesus called to me, John. My brother James and I were mending our nets in our father's boat when Jesus told us to follow him. We were so excited. We dropped everything and followed. Since that time, I've come to understand Jesus through his love. Something very hard for a man of impulsive character and fiery temper. But the love of the master has changed me. And now he calls me the beloved disciple. Jesus once said, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Now that is true sacrificial love. He has given so much, and like the good shepherd, he loves and protects us. Someday I'm going to share with the world about our good shepherd, that he is Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, we will have eternal life. For he said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But now he said one of us will betray him. Can a sheep betray his own shepherd? Is there a wolf in the fold? Surely it's not my brother, or Andrew, or Peter. Could it be me? The beloved disciple? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? Ask Jesus who he's talking about. Who will be the betrayer? Master, I'm heartbroken over this betrayal. Who is the one who will do this terrible thing? The one who is going to betray me is one of the twelve. Someone I eat with every day who passes me food at the table. The one I dip my bread with in the bowl is the one who will betray me on this night. Certainly not I, Master. Whatever you must do, do it quickly and get it over with. Stop it. Get it. Stop it. Let it go. What do you mean, let it go? On this night that is unlike any other, we have gathered together to remember our liberation from slavery in Egypt through the mighty hand of God. Tonight, I tell you, you will never see this Passover meal the same way. Because after tonight, every time you take this bread, you will remember my body, which will be given for you on the cross. And every time you share this cup, you will remember my blood, which will not only willingly be shed for you, but will recognize a new covenant and the forgiveness of your sins. And so, on this night that is unlike any other, I ask that you will do as I have done and serve and love one another as I have loved you. And every time that you take in this bread and share this cup, you will remember, you will remember her father in this meal. Pray with me. Abba, Father, I thank you for these, my friends, and ask your blessing as you look over them in the days ahead. And bless the bread and the cup, and let them be an eternal reminder of your ever-saving love. Amen. Take. Eat. This is my body broken for you. Drink. 
This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Come now, everybody, and take in my body and blood and receive the abundant life that can only come from our Father.
By the world's standards, Jesus' 12 disciples appeared very ordinary. They were not leaders in the community, they were rugged laborers, and they weren't overly religious. Yet Jesus always chose the best individuals to fulfill his purpose, the humble, the teachable, and faithful. Jesus spent all his time on earth training his disciples for what was to come. They would have to carry on when he was no longer with them. Even though the disciples had doubts, and at times they were timid and afraid, and they even denied him, they were forever changed when they witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. They became bold in spreading the message of Jesus Christ and spent their lives preaching and teaching that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nothing, not persecution, not even death, could take away their passion for preaching the gospel. Judas was the first disciple to die. After his betrayal of Jesus, Judas felt remorse and tried unsuccessfully to return the 30 pieces of silver he had been paid to betray Jesus. Judas then went and hung himself. James, the son of Zebedee, was the first disciple to be martyred for his faith in A.D. 44. James continued to preach even when was, he was being arrested and led to the place of execution where he was beheaded by King Herod. Philip was crucified or hung upside down by hooks through his ankles and then finally he was stoned to death. Matthew, the former tax collector, died a violent death in Ethiopia. His body was chopped apart with an axe known as a halberd. James the Less, son of Alphaeus, was thrown from the temple tower. When they discovered that he was not dead, his enemies clubbed him to death with a fuller's club. Andrew, the brother of Peter, was severely beaten and tied by ropes on an X-shaped cross where he hung two days before dying. The X-shaped cross is now commonly known as St. Andrew's Cross. Peter was killed by crucifixion in Rome. Peter felt himself to be unworthy to be put to death in the same manner as his Lord, and therefore, at his own request, was crucified with his head downward. Thaddeus spread the gospel of Jesus to the region of Mesopotamia. He, too, was crucified. Nathaniel was martyred for his preaching in Armenia. He was beaten and flayed to death. In other words, he was skinned alive. Thomas was lanced or cut up in pieces by idolatrous priests, and then his body parts were burned in an oven. Simon the Zealot was believed to have been martyred by being cut in half with a saw. John was the only apostle not martyred. He was captured and thrown into a drum of boiling oil, but when he was taken out of the oil, he was miraculously unharmed. John was then banished to the isolated island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. He was later freed and died a natural death of old age. Jesus, the Son of God, because of God's great love for us, Jesus willingly took the wages of sin upon himself so that we can have eternal life. His was a cruel and violent death. He was beaten, mocked, spit on, and crucified on the cross, suspended by three nails. He suffered for us. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed.
Let us pray together. Lord, we enter now into the darkest hours of Jesus' journey to the cross. We know that in those hours after his Last Supper with his disciples, they came for him in the Garden of Gethsemane. We know that he suffered there, that he sweat blood, that he asked that this cup might be taken from him. But then he prayed, not my will, God, but thine be done. Jesus did willingly go to the cross, and it is by his stripes that we are healed. As we go from here tonight, and as we remember his crucifixion and death tomorrow, let us meditate on our own responsibility to it. Let us ask the same question that the first disciples did. Is it I, Lord? Is it I who betray you? Is it I who live unfaithfully? Be with us as we continue in this holy week and lead us ultimately to the gift of life on Easter morning. For we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.